Ross Overstreet with FLIR Systems. Today I'd like to introduce you to our latest 640 by 480 pixel microbolometer, the SC645. The SC645 is the first 640 by 480 in a lab style package designed to be mounted on tripods, on microscope stands, or in fixtures. You may be familiar with our handheld offering, the SC660 or SC620, that also had a 640 by 480 pixel detector. These cameras are more appropriate for use in the field where you needed portability. Let's take a look at the SC645 up close. So we'll start at the front. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is uh, the optic on the front. It comes to fault with a 25 degree lens. This can be removed and replaced with other lens options. We plan to have a 15 degree and 45 degree available in the fall and we'll have microscope and telescope options available early next year. We can remove the lens, it's just a bayonet mount. Take a look inside, you'll notice there are electrical contacts up top and there are contacts on the back of the lens. This allows us to measure the temperature of the lens and include this in the calibration equation. This ensures the camera will remain accurate over the entire operating range. Another unique offering on the SC645 is a filter holder on the back of the optic. Uh, this allows us to use standard one inch diameter filters available from a number of different companies to screw in right behind the optic and provide subspectral filtering in the 7.5 to 14 micron range. Another really neat thing about this camera is we can manually focus it by twisting the focus ring or the computer can automatically focus it through our examiner software. Moving back along the housing, you'll notice we have three mounting holes on the camera on each side. And we have quarter 20 on this side, on the bottom, and on the other side as well. So let's spin it around and take a look at the back. As far as connections, you'll notice that we have power over here on this side. The camera accepts 12 to 24 volts DC. Uh, it comes with a power supply that plugs into the wall to provide this 12 to 24 signal. And it also comes with a pigtail that you can wire to your own power supply if necessary. Along the bottom we have an I.O. connector. This allows us to send a trigger signal to the camera to basically gate when the data will be recorded in software. You can send a signal and have it go high when you want to start recording and send it low when you want to stop recording. Finally, we have two different ports for digital data. You see a gigabit ethernet connection on the top and a USB connection on the bottom. This camera is a little bit faster than our previous 640-480 microbolometer. It can do 50 frames per second at 640 by 480. We can window it down to provide higher speeds. Uh, if you w it windows down in the vertical direction. So you can window it down 640 by 240 and do 100 frames per second or 640 by 120 and do 200 frames per second. So you can choose between Gig E or USB, but it's important to note that the limitations on USB is 25 frames per second at 640 by 480. If you plan to go faster than this or use the windowing capability, we recommend that you go to the Gig E connection. The camera supports Gig E Vision and Gini Cam on this gigabit ethernet connection. So you can use it with our software examiner or you could use it with any third party software package that supports Gig E Vision. So let's talk for a minute about the software installation and getting to the first image. You'll want to install the examiner CD. This CD will install some driver software by a company called Pleora. Uh, after the installation is complete, you'll want to go to Pleora eBus Driver Suite Driver Installation Tool and install the eBus Universal Driver. This will let us achieve the high frame rates that the camera is capable of. You can run the camera with either a dynamic or a fixed IP. There are reasons for doing either that we'll discuss later in a support video. After that, simply connect the camera's Ethernet connection to the back of the computer to the camera. Wait a few moments, launch Examiner, and we should be able to get an image. Okay, so we'll connect our Gig E cable. Look for the blinking lights on the bottom to ensure that communication has been initiated. Then we'll take a look at our PC. We'll notice that we have blinking lights down here on our network icon. Uh, it says local area connection, one gigabit per second, acquiring network address. Now we launch Examiner. When Examiner launches, it goes out and scans the computer and finds all connected cameras. In this case, under our Gig E bus, we find an SC645 and we see its serial number. 
Simply click on the link and we'll get an image from the camera. So now that we have an image, the first thing we'll want to do is get focus. So we go up to camera control to bring up the camera control dialog box. Move to the focus tab and do an auto focus. Here we have our first image. So for information on the next step, please see the Examiner Max Getting Started video. Thank you. For further information, please contact Clear Systems.